I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of Fintech Finance, we take a look at cyber, in particular cyber security. For this, we speak with Veritas, Metro Bank and Barda Bank. So firstly, I went to speak with Chris Bridgeland from Veritas to hear about how he thinks organizations should arrange their data and whether or not he thinks unstructured data should still be stored. So, so our macro approach is, is you know, you take, it up a, take it up a level. Most organizations know how to search databases. Most organizations ha understand the, you know, this, this concept of data schema, how the data is laid out in my database so I can search for the, search for the information. On the unstructured world, you've got to be able to get into those files. And that's where you know, some of the technologies that we deploy and employ with, with our customers is, how do I open up that file? How do I classify it? And that's going to be one of the key aspects to, to organizations. Classification is going to be key, not only in classifying the data that, that comes in as it's created, but also classifying or possibly reclassifying old data that you've had. But you require technologies to get in under the covers of doing that, rather than having a, a bunch of people going through every single file clicking. Let's deploy technologies effectively to be able to see what's in those files, be able to provide some level of visibility get based on classification policies, what type of data, social security numbers, all the other things that basically people are looking at from a personal uh, personally identifiable sort of perspective and and be able to understand you know is that a value to the business yes or no in using that as my first phase once I've done that then I can actually take that to, and do a joint activity the IT team can actually become a business partner and sit down with the business units and say this is the data we've got do you want to make a decision on this does it satisfy certain criteria based on my policies if it does great, I'll keep it. If it doesn't, then I can make a decision to remove it. But right now, lots of people are blind to that. What are some of the other sticks, as opposed to carrots, that banks should look at when it comes to organizing their data? I mean, what's the dangers of they, if they don't organize their data, irrelevant of regulation? Coming back, I suppose, to that comment about looking into your data and understanding it in the first place, I don't think any organization wants to get surprised. If you get surprised by what's inside your data because somebody's told you to go and look for it, then you just haven't been doing a good job. And, and one of the biggest, biggest sort of things is that this, the fines of the, that are going to be out there, if you don't, if you don't know what you got and, you, and a breach happens, how do you know what's gone? You know, and that's, that's going to be one of the biggest, biggest challenges. And I would say you know, there's, a, there's a minor breach level and there's a, there's a major breach level. 2% of annual turnover, global annual turnover, 4% of global annual turnover. And if you're found wanting in any of those sorts of spaces, major breach sort of activity is going to be coming your way and the, and the fines are going to be significantly more. And that's, you know, back to that sort of piece is 20 million euros or 4% well, of, your, your sorry, of your annual turnover. That comes back to the, the, I suppose, our conversation earlier about it could be business ending when you're in that sort of, that sort of situation. And, and on, back to the, the, the comment that you asked, the big stick piece is, is they will come after you and if you're, sh if you're seen to be negligent, then, then basically they're going to hit you with the biggest stick they possibly can. Well, let, let's take a, no, nothing from the ICO, complete regulation off the table. Yeah. Why is it still a good idea to have your data organized? What are some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages of, of not having your data organized? Yeah, so, so flip it into the positives yeah. right now. So, so and that's, that's one of the, the key aspects. Number one, we, if, if I, from a technology perspective, an IT perspective, if I can keep cleansing my data, I'm saving money. I'm not storing mu much more. I'm protecting the data that I know is valuable to me. I'm actually driving efficiencies through the organization and actually it should be seen as a, as a, as a force for good versus a force for, for, for basically beating you with a stick. Equally, if you can demonstrate that you are adhering to regulations, you're adhering to policies, people feel more comfortable to, to trust you with more than just, if I'm a bank, my money. But what if the banks want to start looking at new services and new offerings? If they can trust you to look after their money, they can trust you to look after their data and can, can then see new service offerings basically coming down the way. They're going to trust you with, with taking those new concepts on as well. And so you can go into new markets and new other activities as well because that trust piece is going to be the absolute key for it. So if I can show how I look after data, I can be efficient and, and look after my shareholder value if I'm a publicly floated bank, I'm in a situation where people will want to naturally gravitate to me. Martin Atkinson from Metro Bank spoke to us about how the new regulation is going to impact the customer experience in a positive way. 
I think we surfaced before, we've got PSD2, GDPR, CMA, Open Banking, the fourth ML directive. I suppose I'd fit position first and foremost that Metrobank supports the intent behind the regulation because fundamentally the regulators are trying to increase security, they're trying to promote competition and switching between banks and also they're trying to demonstrate to customers the value that they hold intrinsically within their own data. So what we do firstly is we make sure that we're going to be regulatory compliant. So we work with the regulators, we make sure that our internal interpretation of the regulations is within the spirit of what the outcomes are trying to be achieved and we check back through industry bodies to make sure that we're consistent in our thinking with other banks. And then once we've got that and we understand the directional flow of the regulation, we then almost hand that off to our customer experience and UX team. And those guys then work with the regulatory spirit, but make sure that they're working through the optimal experience, whether that's through the mobile app, whether that's through our stores, or whether it's through our telephony. Because it's really important as banks that we maintain the regulatory accountability, but we're absolutely wedded to making sure that it's an optimal experience. And, and now having an in-house design team gives us unfettered access into how we can build those great services and, and experiences. So would you say it's almost as if uh, you've got the capabilities and the flexibility that you can make the regulations a positive thing for the customer? I think you hit the nail on the head. For us, we see regulation now as an opportunity. So yes, PSD2 is mandating that we expose certain products and certain services, but actually it offers a real opportunity for us to build new relationships or new economic value chains. And therefore, whilst the driver is regulation, we honestly think that with the capability that we've built, we can seize this as a strategic opportunity for the bank. I headed over to Munich to speak with Oliver Rydell from Barda Bank to hear about how they ensure that customer data is kept securely. Our main focus is IT security to protect our customer data. All systems and data are kept in our own safe data centers, which are maintained by highly skilled system engineers based in Unterschleißheim. In addition to all standard security systems like firewalling, network security, anti-malware technologies, we have contracted external security consultants who are testing us and the whole infrastructure on a regular basis for any possible threat. Beside existing data security, the requirements set out by the authorities, Bada Bank has an additional authorized security system. Therefore, in our view, we are best prepared for the new general data protection regulation. In terms of the, the new GDPR, the new data directive, what, do you think banks in general in Germany are, are prepared for it? I mean, where do you kind of see that hap the effect that have, will have on the industry? Generally, we do not comment about competitors. All I can say is that we have a very strong focus on IT security, and I think we are in a good position to be prepared for the general data protection regulation coming up soon. Um, but I think everybody has the need and the obligation to be state of the art, um, and therefore I think um, uh, many will be prepared, I can say we're definitely in a good position. When speaking with Jason Tooley from Veritas, I was curious to hear about how conflicting regulations can work together. I think the requirements are the opposite ends of the spectrum, but I think what it does come back to is that without all aspects of financial services thinking about building that culture of confidence in the use of information and the confidence in the use of not only personal information but transactional information, then you're going to have some challenges around meeting the compliance requirements at both ends of the spectrum. So I do think that's a challenge and I do think that there is real risk in that some of the um, new entrants into the payments arena will, will have to think very carefully about how they meet broader GDPR type regulatory requirements. And I'm not sure they are thinking about that. I think the banks are thinking about it, but I'm not sure some of the other organizations are yet. And I think they'll have to. How do you guys here at Veritas, how do you really combat some of these kind of external threats happening to the industry? So, so we approach information management from the context of two angles, really. One angle being we recognize that information is really the, the key currency for customers today. Um, and you know, that information could reside in many different locations. Mm -hmm. You talk about cloud adding complexity, but also value to, to an organization in terms of allowing them to be more agile. 
but you're also adding more complexity and where some of your information may reside. And you've, you've got to think very carefully about that. And so for us, we're thinking about getting more value out of your information by understanding it better, by classifying it better. And by classifying, I also mean not only structured data, but also unstructured data. And that unstructured data growth is, is really driven by that digital engagement between, between consumer and, and organization. So you've got the need to really drive more value out of your information. And that's the way that you personalize and improve your service delivery. It's also the way that you differentiate your, your market offerings in many respects. And then you've got the other side of the equation, which is how do I govern my information in a far more effective fashion than I ever have before? So that I'm very much focused on the importance of my information and classifying what's really important and what's maybe not so important. But doing all of that in the context of the regulatory requirements like GDPR. So our focus is very much in those two areas. Help organizations drive more value out of their information, um, help them maintain their compliance and their governance position around their information, but don't delay them or stop them embarking on strategies like cloud mm. that allows them to be more agile and bring services to market better and to personalize services potentially and differentiate themselves from their competition. That's our goal. Harness your information, get more value out of it, but maintain your governance position. What do you think that these regulations are going to do for the industry in the future? Big time. Regulation will change whole business models. First of all, as a B2B player, we have to adopt the regulatory requirements for ourselves and our clients. MIFID II and data protection are the main topics and will bring for everybody more transparency. For example, unbundling. Here at the Barter Investment Conference, the main topic besides the classic uh, meetings between investors and companies is the pricing of research in 2018. So you will have a complete transparency for the payments for research, corporate access, and conferences like the Barter Investment Conference on one hand and trading on the other hand. The data collection will become easier in the future and way more structured than with paperwork in the history. There is a very strong focus on the IT security in the moment in the financial market. Being a bank like ourselves, providing innovative products is very challenging. Our strategy at Barter Bank is to provide services to our customers in our own data centers that keep us flexible and fast in implementing IT solutions for the fintech market. Technologies needed for those services need an enormous amount of investment and effort to operate them in accordance with compliance. I wanted to hear about some of the legal aspects of big data and the uses of it moving forward. Well, it's interesting actually. In general, the way it works currently is a data controller, the person that owns and directs how that data is processed, will be the one primarily liable. And to a degree, that doesn't change in the sense that they are responsible for putting the right contracts in place and they are deemed to have checked out or they, they are required to check out their processes. For data subjects, the way it works is that anybody in the chain of processing can be sued by the data subject for the damage they suffer. That's there really to give a data subject a better chance of getting their rights, a better chance of recovering damages for what's happened to them. And then it's expected that the controller and the processor will sort that out amongst themselves behind the scenes. So for example, a bank could have done a, a deal with a, a processor and the processor could in fact have been in the wrong. The individual could still sue the bank direct even though the bank actually hadn't done anything wrong in those circumstances. Then if we look at the contractual liability, well, that, that falls generally as to who has breached what in that particular circumstance. Then in the terms of fines, the new thing about the GDPR is you can actually have a fine levied on both the controller and the processor. Now, which of them is responsible in any given circumstances will be a matter of fact. So the regulator will look at that and they will say, have you breached these particular clauses of the GDPR? How has that affected things? And they will take their view then. 
But the new thing is the fact that processors can have these direct fines. Where do you see the use of data moving in the future? Talking about the future, in, in my opinion, going forward, with a rapidly growing amount of data available, the usage of big data systems becomes even more important. Being able to analyze and utilize this data in near time will be essential to lead the competition. Barter Bank is in a comfortable position to be a, let's say, young bank. The system architecture is very modern, and there are no old-fashioned legacy systems. Our staff is a good mixture of experienced as well as young, innovative professionals. On the next episode of Fintech Finance, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the plastic card.